Okay, so this is the course content. I believe I have already attached this in our e-learning platform. So I think you already have seen this. Eh? So here are the topics that we mm -hmm. are going to cover mm -hmm. eh? uh, during uh, for uh, throughout our courses. So if you look at here, actually the proportion for the civil engineering is uh, largest. Eh? We have uh, topics or weeks eh? for the civil engineering, which is about nine times nine times. Eh? Uh, meanwhile, for the electrical engineering, which will be conducted by Dr. Lau, eh, is only, I think, three times. And then Dr. Zamri from Mechanical is only two times. Okay. So if you look at here, uh, just brief for my parts, eh? if I just brief for my parts, so we, are, we will talk a little bit on the concrete, steel and timber and their properties, type of degradations and so on. So if you look at here, actually we have divided the topics to the material properties, types of degradation, cost and effects every week, okay? But uh, according to my past experience, I believe that the students are very difficult eh, to comprehend if we break down the topics like this. Eh? So instead of doing, uh, we take material properties as a one single topic. So I would just talk about concrete Okay, and then when I talk about concrete, I will chip in what are the material properties, what are the type of degradation and so on. Then when we're done about concrete, we will talk about steel uh, and we'll discuss lah, again eh, the material properties, the failure mode and so on and up until the timber. Okay, I think it will be easier for you to understand all these things. Okay, right. So this is the most exciting parts, your assess, uh, assessment. So uh, you do not have a test one and also test two. You only have assignment one, two, and also project and also final exam. Lab, eh? Your carry mark is 50 and your final exam is uh, another 50. So the assignment one will be conducted by myself. So I've already put the, what we call the title in the e-learning. Eh? So later I will present again to you. So we have uh, 15 marks. Eh? So basically, uh, if according to my style, eh, as long as you do it, <laughs> then you are entitled to get uh, very high marks. Eh? So no need to worry about that. Okay, assignment two and also the project. Assignment two will be by Dr. Zamri, which is on the mechanical parts because you only have two topics. And then the project is 20 from Dr. Lau. Eh? And then final exam, you have three questions. Sorry, Cairo. Sorry, sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. It's okay. Go ahead. Sorry, I think that I... I... Okay, I thought you have questions. Eh? Okay, never mind. Just continue. Eh? So for your final exam, eh, I've already talked with uh, talk talk to Dr. Lau and also Dr. Zamri. Eh? So they have agree we are going to have uh, three questions. Okay, one question is from civil engineering, another one is from electrical, and the last one will be from mechanical. So from the civil engineering, uh, out of one hundred, eh, out of one hundred, it will be forty marks from civil engineering. Okay, and then 30 and uh, 30 marks for mechanical and electrical respectively. Okay, but before we continue, eh, may I know how many of you are not from the civil engineering background? Or maybe your degree is not from civil engineering or you are not working in the civil engineering right now. Okay, Hanif, your background is? Hafiz also? Hello, Dr. Law. Uh, Dr. Ma, sorry, uh, Hafiz. Uh, yeah. I I am a mechanical doctor. Okay, mechanical. What about Hanif? <coughs> mechanical doctor. Okay, right. So none of you are from electrical, eh? Okay, all, all right. Okay, so I assume the rest of you, uh, aside from Hanif and also Hafiz, eh, you are from civil engineering, lah, right? You have civil engineering background. Eh? Okay, right. So. This is your assignment, yeah, your assignment number one, right? 10 pages report uh, consisted of these two topics. Yeah? So in your report, it should consist of these two topics, uh, only 10 pages. And then you have to uh, uh, what we call present your report in eight minutes video. So you might need to do some, uh, it's up to you. Yeah? It's up to you. You can do videos, you can do uh, uh, maybe, maybe like slideshow, okay? And then maybe whatever short movies okay <laughs> explaining your report in eight minutes okay in eight minutes video around eight minutes like if you want to do 20 minutes it's up to you but as, uh, the, the minimum time is eight minutes right? and then maximum three person per group okay and then after this i will uh, what we call uh, give you the link at the OD, uh, in the OD, our odl 
for your submission, eh, for your video submission. You, so you just submit to the, through the links. Right? Okay, so that is about your assessment one. All right. Okay, so now we uh, continue. Okay, Hanif. Doctor, a lot of individual, doctor. Sorry? Individual or basically must be in a group? Uh, it is a group project. Three person in a uh, per group. Okay. All right. Okay, right. Hello. Yeah, hello, uh, doctor. Yes. I, I just want to clarify with you. Uh, okay. Regarding the projects that you just mentioned, I'm, I'm from Singapore. Uh, regarding the project you just mentioned, just now one of the, uh, the peers asked, uh, must it be a group or can be done individual? It should be in group. Uh. It should be in group. Three person per group. Mm. Oh, so you, you, are, you are the only one in Singapore? Yeah, correct. <laughs> because okay. sometimes the schedule may be difficult uh, to meet. Uh. Okay. So uh, I'm not sure whether uh, would there be uh, any penalize if uh, it's a single project in case I cannot find any group? Okay, okay, okay. Actually, I am a very democratic person. Eh? So I would like you all to uh, give me your opinion. Which, what, which way you prefer? You prefer this one as an individual, uh, individual project or a uh, group project? I prefer individual due to okay. the time and family commitment. <laughs> okay, right. To, to, to individual. So what about the others? Well, I prefer it as a group. Uh, okay. Doctor. So, but okay. Uh, I think uh, three, we, I might prefer uh, two person instead of a maximum three person, you know? Yeah. So, okay. so one person can, can deal with the video and the other one is, uh, can deal with the report. Okay. All right. Okay. I think it's better like this eh? for the for 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 the for, for the sake of simplicity, lah, eh? I will say that the this uh, this uh, project you can uh, it can be done by maximum of three person. So you can do it individually, two person or three person up to you. You guys arrange yourself. Okay. But you have to let me see eh? if you are in a group. So I want to know that everyone is uh, participating, lah. Okay, okay. It can be two percent. It can be individual, but ma maximum is three percent. Okay, because I do not want okay. letter to uh, submit individual and then Cairo and and maybe three, yeah, Cairo and three two person and then the rest uh, thirteen, <laughs> uh, for sorry twelve become one group. Okay, maximum three percent one group. Okay, but you can arrange yourself uh, whether you want you prefer individual or in a group. Maximum three percent. Eh? The number is up to you. Okay. So, is it okay? Yeah. So doctor, yeah. one more question. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, doctor. One more question is that I noticed that the topic is about fractography, uh, uh, interpretation okay. of fractured surface. Uh. So this topic, okay. uh, according to your program, uh, it will be covered uh, in week six, or yeah. it is actually covered uh, in between. Uh. In the weeks, uh, actually, it's in the week six. Sorry, in the yeah. it's the week seven. Week seven, week but seven. the submission date is a uh, sixteen May. Uh. Yeah, yeah, sixteen May, sixteen May. Never mind because I just give you uh, more time to do. No need to follow on the on uh, on this schedule. Too strict. Yeah, no need to follow on this schedule. I just give you sixteen May, so that you can uh, submit that uh, even after my class. Will there be any chances where you can upload uh, this uh, topic for the project uh, as a heads up so that uh, we can read because we are working, you see, so that uh, while we go through your other week modules, we can actually mm -hmm. start to read up on this fractography mm -hmm. and then start to do some research. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you, you mean reading material and also yes. the slide? Like, read. Upload okay. the reading material and the slide in uh, advance. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay, can can okay. I will do. Uh, I, will, I will give you all later on. Okay, okay. Any other other questions that you need my clarifications? Anything? Okay, if none, eh, so we just continue. So in case you think of anything, you can just uh, ask later on, eh, or ask me through WhatsApp. It's okay. Okay, right. Uh, our so since this is engineering material, then we are talking about materials only, right? And actually, engineering material courses is a simple subject, but it is not an easy subject. Eh? 
So you have to pay full attention. Eh? Okay, so one of the most commonly used material uh, in the world is actually concrete. Okay, so we are within our topic with uh, concrete first. Okay, so the aims for the, the topics that we are going to cover today is uh, we will talk a little bit about concrete and the ingredients of the concrete, types of the concrete and the properties. Eh? It's properties in terms of strength, workability, durability, so on and so forth. And then we will talk about concrete when it is in the fresh state and when it is in the hardened state. Eh? So there are two different states of the concrete and then the effects of the water cement ratio because when we want to play uh, adjust the properties of the concrete, so this is the main important effect, eh, sorry, main important parameter, which is the water cement ratio. And then the tests available or normally being used in the industry for the test of the fresh concrete and also the, some types of the segregation and bleedings on the concrete. Okay, so like what I have already mentioned earlier, uh, concrete is actually one of the most commonly used construction material. And it, it, no matter you are in what discipline, so as long as you are in the civil engineering, eh, as long as you are in civil engineering, you have to deal with, uh, deal with concrete. Eh? No matter you are structural engineer, geotechnical engineer, environmental engineer, hydraulic engineers, and, or even forensic engineer. Yeah. So as a forensic engineer, when you were asked to go to do a building investigation, for example, eh, you have to uh, know about concrete. Eh? Okay, so it, it was used in a wide variety of applications, eh, ranging from power, multi-story building, dam foundations, pavement, storage tank, bridges, and, 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 and many other structures. Eh? I believe those from a civil engineering background, you already encountered this, eh? encountered concrete multiple times. Eh? And it is one of the most economical material. It is cheap, okay, and it can be molded in various shapes. Eh? So that is why it is so popular. So the example like this one, eh? it can be used to build dome, eh? dome shape, and also like a irregular shape, like the water breaker. Okay, so the main basic ingredients in the concrete, as we all have already know, is cement, water, cost aggregate, and fine aggregate, right? So, this water, cement, fine aggregate, and cost aggregate, you can say they are the four main basic ingredients. Yeah? So, water, when it plus with cement, yeah? in contact with cement, they will enter a very complex chemical reaction where we call hydration, yeah? cement hydration. Whereas, cost aggregate and also fine aggregate, they are inert material in this mixture. Which means that they would uh, they, 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 they will have no uh, chemical reaction, no complex chemical reaction. Instead, they will they are just inert material. Eh? But we have to bear in our mind that in concrete, eh, actually 60 to 80 percent of the volume of the concrete is made of this coarse aggregate and also fine aggregate. Okay, so which means that if the properties of the aggregates that we are using, no matter if it's coarse aggregate or fine aggregate, if the aggregates are weak, yeah. So the concrete that we built using those weak aggregates will also inherit these properties, okay? And of course, if the aggregates that we are used is strong, right, the concrete will also be stronger. Similarly, like uh, water absorption ability, eh, if the aggregate that we are using has the ability to absorb the water, eh, so the concrete is that we made by using this aggregate also. Even though it is inert material, but the roles of aggregates in the concrete is also uh, very important. Eh? But of course, eh, the most unique feature of concrete eh, compared to other uh, engineering material is they have the hydration process, which is the cement plus water. Eh? We will talk about this in detail later on. Eh? Okay, and then sometimes eh, when we want to alter the properties of the concrete, for eh, example, if you want to increase the strength of the concrete or if we want to uh, in, uh, increase the workability of the concrete, we might need additional material aside from these four main ingredients. This is not necessary to be aided, but when we use it, eh, we use it to alter the properties of our concrete, to improve the properties of our concrete. Yeah, So there is uh, this one, eh, admixtures. Okay, So in the markets right now, there are lots of types of admixtures. Uh, we have like uh, the most famous one, which is the super plasticizer, right? And even we have the set retarder, uh, what we call set accelerator, AN training agent, and so on and so forth. And we will talk about that later on. Okay, so regarding the properties of the concrete, so here are some of the main properties that we have to know. So concrete actually is very good in terms of the compression, but it is very weak in terms of the tension, eh? very weak in terms of tension. So basically, yeah, the tension 
of the concrete is only about one tenth, sorry, about one tenth of the compression capacity, which means that if your concrete is 30 megapascal, so the tensile length, eh, sorry, the tensile strength is only about three megapascal. Eh? So that is why in the design office, and eh, maybe some of you from the design office, when we design reinforced concrete, eh, normally we will we won't take the, the, the tensile capacity of concrete into consideration. We will just ignore it eh, because the tension is actually very weak. Eh? And then concrete is a very brittle material, eh, as you can see in this figure. Yeah, during the failure, it is uh, uh, explosive and in sudden manner. So we consider it as a brittle material. And by nature, it's a porous material yeah, because there are a lot of, uh, lots of air voids inside the concrete. Yeah. So the external agent, for example, like water, oxygen, and carbon dioxide, they can easily enter to our concrete. Right? And then concrete can be easily to work with eh, if it is uh, workable and it can be a durable material and uh, have a very good fire resistance. All right, so, okay, right. So this is the example eh, of uh, the tension and compression uh, capacity of a concrete. So let's say if we have a concrete beam, eh, so hopefully, uh, those who are not from the in civil engineering backgrounds, you still can catch up with me up until now. Is it okay? Haf Hafiz and also Hanif. Okay? Boleh? Okay, doctor. Okay. Okay, okay right. doctor. Okay, right. So I believe you all know this. Eh? So this is beam, eh? RC beam. Eh? So RC beam, when we put load on top of the beam, eh? it will deflect. Eh? So when it deflect, the top part or, or the upper part normally is in compression yeah? it's in compression and the bottom part is in tension okay so that's why concrete is a material that we cannot use uh, plain concrete in the construction yeah? we have to use it in combined with the tensile reinforcement in order to uh, what we call top up the weak tension uh, capacity of the concrete yeah? so that's why if you look at here this part is pulling Right? It's in tension part. Eh? So concrete, which is very weak in terms of the tension, normally it will break. Eh? It will break at this part eh? because it is not good in terms of the tension. So that is why concrete, we have to use it together with the reinforcement where we put the reinforcement bar or the steel bar inside the concrete to take up the tension part. Eh, sorry, that are the tension parts. Right? So this is the stress strength curve, eh? stress strength curve of the material. Uh, of the concrete and also steel. Eh? So normally we will write like this. Eh? So this is the stress strength curve. So stress strength curve, eh? stress strength curve of uh, actually is the is like the thumbnail of a human being. Eh? Uh, sorry, it's a thumbnail for the engineering material. Right. So every engineering engineering material they have different uh, stress strength curve. At the example like concrete. Eh? So the concrete, it the stress strength curve is like this. Okay, and then the steel we have like this. Okay, and then also like timber. Eh? Timber it will we have like this, eh? straight line. Okay, so every engineering material that possess different system curve. Eh? We are we are going to talk about this later on. Okay, fresh and hardened concrete. So when the concrete is uh, freshly mixed, eh? when it is freshly mixed, when we add cement, uh, water, coarse aggregate, and also fine aggregate together. Okay, when we first mix the concrete, when it is still in its slurry forms, eh, in its liquid form, we call it as a fresh step. Eh? The concrete is still in its fresh step. Okay, then after a period of time, when the concrete has undergo some hydration process, eh, we call the concrete as a hardened concrete. Okay, so concrete in the construction industry, normally they can be used for, uh, for example, like like this and eh? the typical this is a typical uh, rc frame which can be used for column slab beam and also foundation eh? okay so okay so i just skip this okay so just now we have already mentioned that eh, the use of the concrete in the construction industry normally is together with the reinforcement which is steel reinforcement right so when the steel in when the steel reinforcement eh, appear inside the concrete eh, so there is a 
tendency where the steel will be corroded. Eh? So that is the problems of the reinforced uh, concrete. Eh? So when a concrete or reinforced concrete, eh, it is in contact with water and also in oxygen, okay? And then uh, this iron is from the steel. Eh? So there is a tendency that your concrete will become corroded, okay? That is because when your steel, it is in contact with the water, it will become iron, uh, iron hydroxide. So this iron hydroxide, the volume is much more larger compared to the iron, and then it will break your uh, concrete, okay? Similar like this, eh? it will result in crack and so on and so forth. Eh? So we have to know uh, what are the uh, main cause and then how we deal with the corrosion, eh? how we deal with corrosion and, and so on, right? Okay, so when we are using a concrete, there are lots of things that we have to consider. For example, if you want to use it for dif uh, different purposes, eh, for high-rise building, let's say, so whether the strength of, a con of the concrete is sufficient or not. So is it high-strength concrete is uh, required? Okay, and then what are the methods eh, to, to, uh, for casting, eh, whether we are using pump concrete or whether we have to use the flowable concrete, and then if the concrete is offshore structure and eh? it is not a normal normal structure then whether the durability of the concrete that we are using is enough or not so these are the things that we have to consider when we want to use the concrete right so important properties of the concrete concrete is very good in terms of the compressive strength eh? we, of course with the proper uh, design okay and then durability good resistant to weather and also aggressive environment and concrete okay concrete eh? Actually, concrete is made by this uh, two types of rocks, eh? calcareous rock and also argillaceous. Can you read my writing? Can, eh? <laughs> Hopefully you can read my writing. Eh? Okay, so these two types of rock. This calcareous, actually, it is very rich in terms of the calcium, okay? In terms of the calcium. And then the argillaceous rock, eh? it contains of this silica, alumina, and also iron oxide okay iron oxide okay so when we burn these things together or when we burn these two types of rock together burn it under very high temperature so let's say 3000 kilo uh, sorry 3000 degrees celsius and eh? when we burn them under uh, 3000 uh, degrees celsius so these things they will fuse together to form another more complex compounds eh? which is what we call as Tricalcium silicate, decalcium silicate, uh, tricalcium aluminate, and also uh, theta calcium alumina ferrite. Okay, so when we burn all these things, eh, it will become this complex compound, this four main compounds. Okay, so these four main compounds, among these four main compounds, these two compounds will react with water. Okay, they will react with water. Of course, yeah? cement actually is made of these four main compounds. Okay, these four main compounds. So when cement is in contact with water, so actually is these two C3S and also C2S, they will have the reaction with the water in order to form a gel, which is what we call as CSS gel. Okay, CSS gel. So this, this CSS gel are the gel that will grip all the coarse aggregate and fine aggregate together in order to form a very hardened material, okay? So uh, how good is your cement actually is dependent on the, effect, uh, the efficiency of your cement to produce this CSS gel. The more CSS gel is produced, the higher strength the concrete that you can get, okay? So that is the hydration process. But of course, the product of the hydration aside from this CSS gel, it will also produce this Calcium hydroxide. Can you read my writings? Hopefully you can. Eh? Okay, this calcium hydroxide. So this calcium hydroxide, actually, it will make sure our concrete is in alkaline state. Okay, so normally concrete, eh, when you fresh uh, cast your concrete, the pH of your concrete normally is more than 12.5. Okay, normally it's more than 12.5. It's in alkaline, uh, al al alkalinity state. Okay, so if your concrete is in alkalinity state, eh, when we put rebar inside your concrete, they will create a passive form of iron oxide at the surface of your rebar. And this passive form, uh, passive film, 
it will protect your rebar from being corroded. Okay, so that is this is what the calcium hydroxide do. Okay, but let's say if your concrete is very porous, eh, it's very porous. It is the external agent easily they can penetrate into your concrete eh, or your concrete. Let's say you have crack eh, and then you don't care about it. Eh, you don't seal the crack and everything. Eh. So the external agent, for example, like the acid salt and everything, eh, they can penetrate into your concrete and then they will neutral down the alkalinity of your concrete. Okay, neutral down the alkalinity of your concrete. So when the pH level of your concrete has dropped until 11 or less than 11, then your the passivity of the the passive firm of the steel bar will got will be gone okay will be gone and then your your your, your rebound will start to corrode okay you start to corrode so that's why in order to ensure that your rc or your concrete is durable eh, uh, you have to yeah that, that that is one way to prevent your steel eh, from from being corroded eh, from being corroded the alkalinity state of your concrete has to be more than 12.5 eh? we don't want to allow any acid or external agent or chloride to penetrate into our concrete okay so types of concrete eh? we can classify it based on the types uh sorry not types of aggregate supposedly is the density of the concrete okay so we can classify the types of the concrete based on its density. Yeah? So density of concrete, we have lightweight concrete, we have normal weight concrete, and then we have heavyweight concrete. Okay, normal weight concrete is the concrete that we normally use, which is uh, around 4, 000, 2,400 kg per meter cube. Yeah? So lightweight concrete is anything less than that. Okay, heavy concrete is more than that. Okay, we can classify the concrete according to this. And also we can classify the concrete based on its strength. Okay, we have normal strength concrete, which is ranging, ranging from zero to 50 megapascal. But of course we do not have concrete, which is zero megapascal. Eh? So this is just a, a ideal figure, eh? zero to 50 megapascal. And then we have high strength concrete, which is 51 to 80 megapascal. And also we have very high strength concrete, which is greater than 80 megapascal. Okay, so now, nowadays, eh, the normal concrete that we are using is fall into this range, which is zero to uh, 50 megapascal. So far, eh, so far, uh, as far as far as I knowledge, eh, the projects in Malaysia that using the high strength concrete is very limited. It is less than 10 projects only. So this is one of the signature project, which is our Jagung, eh, the twin towers of <laughs> KLCC, and they are using high strength concrete. So part of the concrete divided into three parts. Eh? So this one is about 90. And then here, the second part is 60. And then this part is 30 to 40. This is as far as I know. Okay. But the definitions of this concrete actually, uh, if based on strength, eh? like high strength concrete, eh? actually this is, uh, uh, will, will, will be changed. Eh? Will change according to re uh, geographic locations and also times eh? the example like uh, 30 40 years ago when my father was still an engineer eh? my father was a retired uh, is a retired engineer eh? so during my father times eh? so normal concrete is about 20 megapascal eh? normal concrete okay so for them eh? for them 35 megapascal 40 megapascal of concrete has already considered as high strength concrete because they are not used to it okay but nowadays when we build a structure, a minimum concrete compressive strength should be 40 megapascal, 45 megapascal. So for us, that is already normal. Eh? That is already normal strength. Okay. So it will change according to times. Lah, eh? But a different standards also will give different definition. For example, like uh, Eurocode. Eh? Eurocode actually, they stipulate that, that 60 megapascal and above only consider as high strength concrete, which means that 60 megapascal below is still considered as normal strength concrete. Okay, so we can classify concrete based on its strength, and also we can classify it based on constructions, eh? like in situ concrete, precast concrete, precessed concrete. Also, it's not only limited to this, eh? uh, So that is only the uh, idea. Okay, like this one, uh, precast, precast structure. Okay, and then we have this uh, precast pile. All right, and then we have precessed uh, beam. Okay, right. So. WC ratio eh, is one of the things that uh, we have to know if we want to control a good quality of our concrete. Eh? 
WC ratio is what we call as water semen ratio, which is the ratio of the weight of free water to the weight of the semen used in the mix. Okay, so here we use the term of free water and eh? we don't use the terms of normal water it is free water eh? it doesn't mean that we do not charge anything for the water eh? it's, it's free water that is the name of free water so what is mean by free water is that if you have an aggregate eh? so let's say in the mixture of the concrete then eh? you will have water water sorry water semen okay and then aggregates okay we lump it together as aggregate eh? no matter it is cost aggregate or fire aggregate so this aggregate, inside this aggregate, eh, for example, this is the aggregate. So if we put this aggregate into the oven to dry it, eh, which means that the moisture inside it, the moisture constant inside the aggregate will be zero. Correct or not? It will be zero. So under this condition, we call this as oven dry or bond dry, eh, oven dry. Okay. But let's say if we do not dry the our aggregate under oven conditions and eh, we just put it under room temperature. So inside here, eh, there will be part of this, uh, what we call, part of this aggregate will still have some water content. Okay. This condition is what we call as air dry. Okay. Air dry condition. Okay. And in some condition, there, your, your aggregates will be full with water okay will be full with water but then the aggregate is the surface of the aggregate is dry okay and under this condition it is called as ssd or what we call as surface uh what we call surface uh, uh, saturated dry condition ssd eh? saturate sorry ssd is surface saturated and dry condition eh? it is saturated eh? but then the surface is dry Okay, surface is dry. So this is what we call as SSD. So when we put the water, water, okay, inside the concrete. So this water, the leftover water, the one eh, at the surface of the aggregate is what we call as free water. Okay, it's what we call as free water. So sometimes when we mix water inside our aggregates, eh, parts of the aggregate, they will be absorbed by the, our aggregates. Okay, so that will affect the water content eh, of our mix. Eh. So the free water that we use in order to design for our, uh, what we call, or in order to design for our concrete mix, or we use for the WC ratio is the free water, which is the water that we uh, here only. Eh, the water that is not absorbed by the aggregates only. So this water will be fully used for the hydration process. Okay, so when we do mix design, and when you check mix design, so supposedly your aggregate should be in SSD. Yeah? And then the water that we put inside the concrete is not to uh, what we call to be absorbed to our aggregates, but it is used fully for the hydration purpose only. Yeah? So that is free water. Okay. So water semen ratio will affect the strength and durability of the concrete. Okay. So if according to the past research, yeah, when we reduce our water semen ratio, you will get higher strength. And of course, you will get better durability of the concrete right so this is how uh, example uh, eh? i believe you all have already know uh, maybe you are more uh, professional than me eh? you already know how to calculate the water semen ratio eh? so uh, water semen ratio is uh, water in kg divided by semen in kg okay and the effects eh? of course it will uh, result in a lot of this air voids inside the concrete if your water semen ratio is high okay if your water semen ratio is very high it will result in a lot of pores inside your concrete eh? voids inside your concrete okay so assuming under so this is abram's law eh? abram's law so assuming full compaction and at the given edge of normal temperature the strength of the concrete can be taken to be inversely proportional to the water semen ratio as shown in this figure Okay. so no need to 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 look at this okay. no need to look at this you only have to look at this so this is the assume fully compacted concrete eh? assume fully compacted concrete so with the increase of the water semen ratio the concrete compressive strength will reduce okay so that is this is that this is the what we call the basic of of the concrete so if we want higher strength we reduce the water semen ratio okay if we want a uh, lower strength we increase the water semen ratio okay so this is the basic eh? so of course eh, this basic 
and these basic things has already been used in the concrete mix design. So in the concrete mix design, uh, how we uh, what we call assume uh, sorry estimate the water semen ratio needed for our concrete mix is also based on this relationship, which is uh, inversely proportional from the water semen ratio with the concrete uh, concrete compressive strength. Okay, so. Uh, Okay, so uh, if you look at this diagram, eh, if you look at this diagram, so so this is the resemblance of uh, what is happening inside our concrete mix. Lah, eh? So when the uh, water cement ratio is low, eh, when the water cement ratio is low, which means that the cement is uh, more compared to water. Eh? So you in this case, you will see like this. Eh? So in this uh, small box, you can see there are a lot of cement particle floating, eh? floating in the water okay but if the condition is high water cement ratio which is look like this eh, you will have a lot of water okay so when the cement is hydrated eh, fully hydrated so this low water cement ratio cement they will form a more denser eh, more denser uh, concrete but for the high water cement ratio one you will see there will be a lot of porosity a lot of a uh, lot of voids and eh, high porosity Eh, and of course, eh, if we press this concrete, eh, if we press this concrete, so the load transformation uh, transferring will be less efficient. Eh? They will lose here. They will lose here. They will lose here. Okay, so that's why it will resulted in a very uh, very low strength of concrete. Okay, so this is the simplified uh, scheme for the hydrated cement press uh, structure. So if we look at here, just now I have already said that. For the hydration process of the concrete, we have the C, let's say C3S, C3S plus the water, it will result in the CSS gel plus the uh, what we call uh, calcium hydroxide. Okay, calcium hydroxide. So this is the simplified schematic for this hydration, uh, uh, what we call process, okay, where when you have a cement, eh, so this is, uh, let's say, this is aggregate, okay, and then you have, uh, sorry, okay. So this is the CSS gel, the CSS gel is this, okay, so here we have the CSS gel, and then we have the calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide is this, okay? calcium hydroxide is this, okay. So we call it as a Portlandite, okay, Portlandite also, and then uh, there are some capillary pores, okay. So this is how the microstructures of the concrete looks like after the cement, uh, the concrete has uh, is hydrated. Okay, so one of the most important factors that affecting the strength and also durability is uh, water cement ratio. So for the normal strength concrete, eh, so normally the water cement ratio will be ranging from 0 0.45 to 0 0.6. That is normal. Eh? So for the 30 megapascal of concrete or 40 megapascal of concrete, normally 0 0.45, 0 0.5 is uh, suitable water cement ratio. But if you want to increase the strength of the concrete, and eh, we have to reduce our water cement ratio. So if based on my past experience like, eh, in the lab, normally in order to achieve 60 megapascal, eh, 60 megapascal of concrete, eh, we have to lower our water cement ratio to about 0 0.3 only. So what is the idea of 0 0.3? Eh? So basically when your mix has the water cement ratio of 0 0.3, normally it is very dry. Eh, you cannot see water. Most of the water has been absorbed by the cement and everything. So it is very dry. So in that case, if we still want our concrete to be workable, we have to add some super plasticizer, eh, which is when we want to produce 60 megapascal. Okay, but W WC ratio or the water cement ratio, aside from affecting the strength and durability of the concrete, it will also affect the workability of the concrete. Like I said, eh, like this one, when it is too dry, the you 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 can say that your concrete mix is no longer workable. Okay? You have to add super plasticizer. Okay, so this is how uh, how it looks like okay? inside the concrete when there are too much of water or too high of water uh, water uh, cement ratio. Okay, too high of water cement ratio. So if you look at here, there are lots of capillary, or lots of pores, lots of voids, and this will make your concrete less dense. Okay, less dense and less durable. Okay, all right. So of course, eh, this is 
the this figure okay this figure is not because of the high water similar ratio this is because we purposely put the foam inside our concrete in order to produce lightweight concrete okay? so the density of the concrete normally is 2400 kg per meter cube okay so this one once we have put the foam inside the concrete since it become uh, less dense eh? less dense so this one is normally can be we can achieve less than uh, 1200 kg which is half lighter compared to the normal concrete okay but if your concrete has a very high water uh, cement ratio eh? basically it will look similar like the lightweight concrete so lightweight concrete actually is not a structural material yeah, it's not the structural material because we cannot use it to use uh, to build the structural elements, yeah? the column, the beam, the slab, everything, it's because it cannot take load. Yeah? So this one, normally the the concrete strength, yeah? the concrete compressive strength is only about 8 megapascal, 12 megapascal. Okay, so normally it is used as the partition, yeah? uh, for as a, what we call furniture, as a insulation. Uh, insulate uh, insulator wall and so on and so forth on the end but not as a structural components like beam slabs and everything yeah? okay so this is the hydration of the cement which i've already mentioned earlier so cement plus water basically is because there are four main compounds in our cement which is the three calcium we call this three calcium silicate d calcium silicate three calcium silicate d calcium silicate Okay, three calcium aluminate and also theta calcium aluminum ferrite. When it is in contact with water, these two, okay, calcium silicates, we call them a silicates family. Yeah, they will form Portlandite, which is the calcium hydroxide, and also CHS gel. So this CHS gel actually is only an abbreviation for the calcium silicate hydroxide. Okay, a calcium silicate hydroxide. Okay, so these are the main things. Eh? So cement, eh? if you want to achieve higher strength of the cement, we should increase this portion, eh? the C3S and C2S, rather than we increase this, eh? we increase this. Okay, so we continue. Eh? So properties of our fresh concrete, okay, properties of our fresh concrete is uh, usually is about workability. So the workability is the amount of work required eh, in mixing, placing, and compacting the fresh concrete without segregation. Eh? How much work that we require in order to work our concrete. Okay. So of course uh, it will. Uh, it's also uh, some of some of the terms eh, which is regarding to the regarded to this uh, workability is consistency, mobility, and also compactability. Okay. We, before I proceed further. Uh, is there anything that you would like to ask? Is there anything that you need my clarification before we continue? No, no, at this moment, okay. Okay, okay. So what about the others? So what about the others? Is it okay? Um, doctor, uh, actually... Yep. Um, um, I'm Ming Yi. So actually, I'm quite confusing when looking at the equations formula thing. Are, are we going to have this in the final exam? <laughs> okay, this one. Yeah. Okay, hydration, hydration process. Um, yep. uh, okay, okay. So this is, uh, there is a possibility that you will being asked. Okay, so... Uh, there is a possibility lah. so you have to you have to you have to memorize it there is there, there, there is no choice you have to memorize the hydration statement. okay so far any any anything that you are confused uh, for uh, about this formula you mean this formula yeah too many c okay too many c okay you don't like calcium, c2 eh? c4 okay okay Calcium, calcium. Okay, it is it is it is very 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 simple. You just have to remember the formulations of the concrete is like this. Eh? So we have calcium. Okay, calcium, which is sila, eh? the one that you don't like. Calcium and then silica, which is S, okay, alumina, alumina, which is A, and also iron oxide iron oxide which is f okay 
So this more fan, this four main things only. So when we burn these things together, eh, then we will enter another complex chemical reaction where they will form these four main things. Okay, which is C3S, which is this one combined this one, but different proportion only. Okay, and then C2S, okay, and then C3A, calcium, three calcium aluminate, and also C4AF. These four main things. Why you have to remember this thing? Why you have to memorize this thing? Because this is the basic of cement engineering. Why I said so? Because now the cement that we are using right now is, uh, I believe you all know, eh? the cement that we are using right now is OPC, right? Ordinary Portland cement. So ordinary Portland cement was made by using these four main compounds. Okay, was made by using this four main compounds, and. Of course, eh, in the industry right now also, we have many different types of other uh, cement other than the OPC. We have the low strength cement, okay? And then we have low heat cement. What else can you can think of? Eh? We have sulfate resistant cement. We have rapid hardening cement, correct or not? Okay, we have many types of the cement right now. And how people make this cement, how people produce this cement actually is from these four main compounds also, okay? The only difference is the proportion because each of these compounds they have different role in our cement. Okay? The example, okay? like what I have already just discussed uh, uh, just now, is that the C3S and also C2S, they are responsible for the strength of the concrete. So if you want to produce high strength, uh, sorry, strength of the cement. Okay? So let's say if you want to produce high strength of the cement, so we should increase this proportion in our cement. That is how the industry do. Yeah? They increase the C3S and C2S in order to achieve higher, higher what we call, higher strength of the cement if they want to produce higher strength of cement. Let's say, what else of the cement that you can think of? Sulfate resistant, yeah? sulfate resistant. So this C3A, yeah? this C3A, actually it is undesirable compounds in the concrete, but when we burn all these things together, all these four, four things together, it will appear, okay, C3A, but it is undesirable things in our concrete because C3A, when it meets sulfate, okay, sulfate, or in general, we call the uh, sulfate attack, lah, eh? when it meets sulfate, it will form a thing which is what we call calcium sulfur aluminate, that is ettingite, eh? which is the thing that we don't want in the concrete, eh? ettingite. So this is the sources of the sulfate attack. Eh, the root cause of our sulfate attack. So if you want to produce, let's say, it's, uh, sulfate resistant cement, we have to reduce this part instead of increasing this part. We reduce this part eh, so that they will have less tendency for our concrete to be attacked by the sulfate. Eh? So that's, that is how we produce uh, sulfate resistant cement. Eh? And also, let's say if you want to produce low heat cement, low heat cement, we have to reduce these two parts. Because these two, these two parts, the C3S and also C3A, they are responsible for the heat of hydration. But of course, eh, we are not going to uh, look very deep in this aspect. Lah, eh? So they just give you uh, what we call, just to let you know that this actually is the basic. Eh? In fact, eh, in the cement engineering, eh, in the study of the cement uh, technology, this is the most important thing. Eh, this slide actually is the most important, which is the hydration of the cement. So whether you like it or not, you have to, you have to memorize it. But maybe uh, one one of the suggestion I can give uh, Tan. Eh? So maybe you do not need to remember all these things. Eh? For example, like the calcium silicate hyd uh, hydroxide, which is the CHS. Eh? You do not need to remember everything. You just put a CHS gel. Eh? As long as you know that is the hydration product and also plus the calcium hydroxide. Eh? Calcium hydroxide, uh, you don't need to put everything uh, like this. Okay, then we'll be too long. But this one, eh, that is compulsory. You have to memorize this. Eh? The three calcium silicates, three calcium silicates. Eh? But of course, eh, but of course, this is uh, an engineering subject. This is not a chemical subject. So I won't request you to do something <laughs> which is so chemically. <laughs> we will we will treat this subject as an engineering subject. Okay, so far any uh, uh, okay done okay okay. Yep, eh? understood. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay, so any other 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 things that you like to ask before I continue?
Okay, okay, not so, not so, not so blue. Huh? Okay, right. Okay, so I, I, I hope that you understand that. But never mind. I, I is this un, is this under recorded? Okay, so this is still under recording. Okay, so in case you, uh, you want to, uh, what we call, uh, refresh back, eh, what I have already delivered just now. You uh, later on, I will share the recording in our uh, e-learnings, lah. Okay, so uh, maybe we can take uh, five. Okay, so you go to refresh uh, yourself. Okay, go to have a drink when uh, we come back again uh, at uh, 9.07. Okay, take a short break. Thank you.
All right, guys. Okay, can we continue? Yes. Okay, right. Yes, Dr. Okay. So, what about the others? Uh? Are they back? Or should we wait for them? Okay, never mind. So, since we have recording, eh? we have recording, so, so I think that we just start uh, right away. Now. Okay. All right. So, workabilities. Eh? Workabilities is one of the qualities in or for the concrete. What we also have to check in configuration if we want to produce a uh, good quality of concrete. Eh? When the concrete is in the fresh state. Okay. When the concrete is in the fresh state. So the factors that affecting the water, uh, the workability, of course, is the water content or the water cement ratio. Okay. And then the cement content and its fineness. Okay, aggregate types and grading, size of aggregates, aggregate cement ratio, admixtures that we are using, okay, admixtures that we are using, and also the weather and temperature of the surrounding when we are doing the concreting works. Okay, because let's say eh, if when we are concreting under the very hot sun, okay, so there is a tendency that you know, the water will evaporate, okay, evaporate. So the water left in your concrete might not be able to produce a very good uh, workable concrete. Okay, so higher water content will increase the intermodal lubrication. Okay? So the water can act as a lubricant. Okay, so they can increase the workability of the fresh concrete and fineness of the cement. Yeah? Fineness of the cement actually is has the minor influence of the workability. But of course, when we are using too fine cement, okay, and the content of the cement is too many or too much, yeah? so. There will the more water will be required in order to wet the parameters of the cement, and hence it will also affect the workability of uh, your concrete. Okay, and then higher cement content will increase the workability, provided that if your WC water cement ratio is constant. Okay, and then finer particles, like I said, eh, require more water to wet the larger specific surface. So this is also applies to the. Uh, fine aggregate and also cost aggregate, eh? especially in the cement, right? So these are the things that affect the workability of our concrete. The example like the aggregates, eh? when it is in irregular shapes or rougher texture, or it is when it is an angular aggregate, so it will demand more water compared to the rounded aggregate. Eh? So the example, if your aggregate is a 20 mm aggregate, so this is the uncrushed aggregate or what we call as rounded aggregate. So Comparatively, if you have the angular or a rougher texture, eh? rougher texture of the aggregate, so this one is also 20 mm. So this one is also 20 mm. Okay, 20 mm of aggregate, but more water will be required in order to wet the, the surface of this aggregate. Eh? So it will affect our workability. Okay, and then uh, for constant WC ratio, water cement ratio, the workability increases as the aggregate cement ratio is reduced because the amount of water relative to the total surface of solid is uh, increased okay right use of the chemical admixture will increase the workability so this one particularly is for the water reducing agent what we call as water reducer or uh, plasticizer and then fly ash will also uh, increase the workability eh, because fly ash eh, it is a spherical shape Okay, so it will increase the workability a little bit. Eh? It's a little bit. So that is a bonus, eh? bonus for using the fly ash. And then higher temperature will, will reduce the workability and also increase the sum loss. Okay, so this is what I said. Eh? So the water from your mixture has the tendency to evaporate it to the atmosphere eh? due to the higher temperature. Okay, so why do we need uh, workable concrete? So if your concrete is not workable, okay, so perfect compaction cannot be done. Okay, so when we remove our foam work eh, for reinforced concrete, you will see your concrete will be like this. And this is what we call as honeycomb. Okay, honeycomb. And so we don't want our concrete to look like this because your aggregate, eh, sorry, your steel bar actually uh, is exposed to the environment. Okay, it's exposed to the environment. And then there are lots of pore here. Okay, so the external agent is easily entered into your concrete to attack the internal river. Eh? So those are the things that we don't want. So in order to know the workability, uh, so 
uh, there are few tasks eh, that we can perform in the lab or at the, at the field, eh, uh, on the field. Okay, so the most popular one, I believe, is the slum test. Okay, Hafiz, have you heard about slum test before? No, no, Dr. <laughs> okay. But I believe some, of, uh, some others you have already uh, noticed, right? Slum test, compacting factor, is it? Cairo, Etna, Hoi? Yes, Bye. yes, Dr. Yes. Okay. Very some test. Familiar, doctor. Very okay. Right. So some of you might have already uh, worked very proficient eh, in terms of the procedure on conducting this test. Lah. So I will just briefly eh, uh, uh, introduce eh, the workability test here. So we have slum test, compacting factor test, and also VB test. Okay. So when we are doing compaction for the concrete, eh, because concrete we need to do compaction. Eh, we need to do compaction for the concrete. So Compaction normally can be done by using two things. Eh? So one is true manual tamping, okay? Manual tamping, and another one is true vibration. Eh? Another one is true vibration, okay? So the slum test and also compacting factor test, they are through this manual tamping, okay? And then this one, the VB test is true vibration, okay? It's true vibration. So this is the procedure eh, for doing the slum test. Okay, so I don't want to read. Okay, just let you have a look on this uh, diagram, eh? this figure. Okay, so basically you will have a slum con. So this is what we call a slum con. Okay, for 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 those not from the civil engineering background. Eh? Okay, so this is for slum con. Okay, so when your concrete is still fresh, eh? once we have mixed our concrete, okay, we put a layer which is about 100 mm. Of concrete fresh concrete inside our sum con okay and then we do tamping so we are using this standard load so it already has the standard weight and also we tamping it for about 25 times for the first layer then we assume that this layer is fully compacted okay then we added another layer repeat the step again 25 times tamping okay and then third is this uh, the, the the last layer okay so once you have already fill in the uh, fill up this slum cone, okay? So you just level it by using the, the trowel or, or whatever, level it, and then you lift the slum, okay? You lift the slum. So your concrete, when it is fresh, it will subside a little bit, okay? It will subside a little bit. And the height at here, okay? at the, uh, the subsided height okay? is what we call a slum. So this is an indication of how workable is your concrete. Eh? Everyone agree, eh? Cairo agree, eh? <laughs> okay. Doctor, yeah. just sorry, just uh, just very quick. Uh, I have an experience of uh, well, uh, when they they did a slum test, mm -hmm. and it found that uh, the slum is zero, but actually when uh, the the concrete is actually a uh, flow from the truck concrete truck, you okay. can see that uh, you can see the the, the concrete is a uh, flowable and the workability mm -hmm. is there. So okay. my question is, how it, these things happen when we did the slum? Uh, mm -hmm. It seems that uh, the, the slums uh, is is totally uh, zero or maybe just uh, less than uh, twenty mil, you know. So in 20, terms of slum, 20, 20 ml, yes. twenty ml. So, but uh, when when well, but the contractor were actually uh, they are they are they are objecting, you know, when we rejected the the concrete and they said no you can see uh, in your eyes the concrete is uh, flowing very well and mm -hmm. the workability is is there but the only thing is because of the slum is less than uh, the required uh, height and mm -hmm. then uh, you reject it so they actually they are challenge uh, our, our 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 inspection and our our decision you know so mm -hmm. my question is how this thing happen uh, when the slum is uh, is not uh, really uh, a desired uh, reading uh, okay. compared with the the, the, the actual uh, concrete uh, flow on, on on site okay so so the reason can be can be many eh? i cannot say because i i i do not inspect the, <laughs> the your your slum test so but the reason actually can be many so the example like last week eh, when i have the class at here and my main uh, laboratory class eh, for my students eh, so there is one group they have to prepare the concrete and everything so actually they pour a lot of water 
inside the con uh, inside the concrete mix okay inside concrete mix so when they mix everything i ask them uh, is it workable uh, in your opinion uh, what do you think they said oh, it is okay it's slurry it is okay eh? and also it's mixed well in the mixer and everything so, eh? then when they do the slum test actually the slum is very low the slum is only about 10 mm so basically we cannot tell whether the concrete is workable or not just by using our eyes so just looking at the at the what we call ready mix truck eh? how can you sure that the workability is there eh? even you see maybe uh, based on experience we say based on experience the color is there is this dark color okay and then you see a lot of uh, uh, water but then it is just our perception so maybe the workability is there so everything has to be based on tesla and then sometimes also this is also happened sometimes eh, in uh, during my time when i was in the consultant when the ready mix when they design everything so when that then when they test before they send to the site eh, the workability is there well, the workability is, is there and when the concrete reach our site we see the workability is there but after when they want to start to do casting something wrong maybe because of weather i don't know maybe because of hot temperature i don't know eh, suddenly there is a loss in the slum eh? suddenly in the loss on the slum so everything we based on and this like yeah everything based on this because uh, just from the experience actually we cannot tell whether the workability is there or not all right okay. thank you thank okay. you Rob. all right Cairo. okay so we just continue eh? so this is slum eh? like what uh, mr Cairo had just mentioned just now yeah so the slum actually is uh, is the, uh, the the indicator eh, for our workability of the concrete so if you get zero of course we have to uh, uh what we call reject the concrete it cannot be used because no work no no workability right but what is the minimum required slump for the concrete to be used in slide anyone can can tell me minimum required slump for normal construction concrete eh? I, well, said normal. I guess uh, i guess uh, not less than uh, 85 mil okay it's uh, uh, not less up, than 85. Up, 85 up to 150 mil in between that okay. range yeah so okay. that's that's uh, normally for for normal uh, concrete if i'm not mistaken oh. yeah i i, I think yeah. okay right thank you thank you mr Cairo. so that is correct eh? so simply put eh? simply put we can say that for a normal concrete which is suitable to be used for build a normal structure which is like uh but like my house eh? normal normal concrete eh? it is not high-rise building it is not offshore structure and everything and uh, not 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 that complicated uh, structures eh? normal structure for normal concrete the minimum required slum is about 100 mm eh? if, if according to court eh, the design court it is 75 millimeter plus minus 25 millimeter okay 25 millimeter so it is about 100 mm but like i said eh, different condition will require different types of slum eh? for example if you are constructing ball piles eh, you all know about ball piles, right? You have to uh, bore into the into the soil, okay? Take the soil out, and then we put concrete to act as a driven pile, okay? So in that condition, because the surrounding soil has the tendency to absorb the water from your concrete, eh? so in that case, you might require higher water content. So I have a, a project before this, eh? The ball pile, the concrete for the ball pile, we have to design for at least three hundred mm. 200 something 200 to 300 mm yeah? that 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 is the uh, example of different condition of site will require different uh, slump but normal concrete it is uh, 100 mm okay 100 mm yeah? okay all right so this is some test yeah? so this is how we uh, get the slump so this is the slump okay so okay so basically when we do the slums eh, so there are some types of the slum one is the true slum which is uh, this one is acceptable this is good okay and then sometimes you will get sheer slum eh? sheer slum you have one part which is very high okay and another part is collapsed okay you don't know where to where to get whether i want to measure oh, so this is let's say this is the cone eh? whether i want to measure this or i want to measure this eh? so in that case you might need to redo the test and this kind of slum also is an indication of the lack of cohesion of your mix okay and then if it is collapsed eh? it is collapsed then automatically you have to reject the test okay you have to reject the test and then you have to redo but of course eh? when we add 
super plasticizer inside our concrete. So there is a tendency that you will get like this. Eh? When we remove the slum, basically true slum is like this. Eh? This is true slum, the slum that we accept, the shape of the slum that we accept. But sometimes when we add super plasticizer or when we are using the self compacting concrete, eh? self compacting concrete, there's different types of concrete. Eh? This, when we lift the cone, it will become like this. So for this type of concrete, which has a very high workability, normal slum test is not suitable. Eh? We have to use another test. Eh? For example, the, the B funnel test, the L box test, or any other kind of uh, slum, uh, what we call workability test. Eh? So this slum test is only for the normal concrete. Okay. All right. So this is the mix. Eh? You can see there are two types of mix here. Okay, so this is a very high slum, and then this is the uh, concrete B, which has a lower slum. Okay, so you can see the difference there. This one is very slurry. You can still see the water. Okay, and this one is quite dry. Okay, so basically, if the concrete eh, mix is like this, eh, normally it is very hard to work with. Eh? You have to do a lot of compaction. Okay, all right. Second test is uh, what we call as compacting factor test. Of course, from its name, eh, you already can see that. Okay, the main purpose of this test actually is to get the compacting factor. So what actually is the compacting factor? The compacting factor can be obtained. Eh? Compacting factor can be obtained by divided the partially weight. Partial weight of the concrete, partially weight in the concrete divided by the, sorry, not partially compacted. Eh, the weight of the partially compacted concrete with the fully compacted concrete, the weight of the compacted concrete. Okay, so how this test is being done, the, this is the, how the compacting factor uh, apparatus looks like. Eh? So basically, you have three uh, stage, three level of hopper. Okay, and then the last one is the cylinder, right? So what when we when we begin our uh, test, okay, when you have the fresh concrete, you pour it on this. Uh, hopper. So basically, you have this stopper. Eh? We call it hopper stopper, eh? or what we call as hinge. Eh? So when when you have already filled this with fresh concrete, then you open this hinge. Okay, the concrete will drop into this layer, and then we open the hinge door again, and then it will drop here. So the concrete that we collected here is what we call as partially uh, compacted concrete. So this partially compacted concrete, if we compare to the weight of the concrete, which is the concrete that we compact according to the slum test just now, the procedure, if you still remember, we have the concrete, we fill one layer, tamping 25 times, one layer, 25 times, and another layer, 25 times. So if the concrete has already been compacted like this, it is considered as fully compacted concrete. So the concrete, the weight of the concrete that we collected here, compared with the weight of the concrete that we fully compacted, that is the compacting factor. Okay, so that is an indication of how many works are required for you in order to work the concrete so that it becomes fully compacted. So normally, when a concrete is uh, has a good workability class, normally the compacting factor will be around 0 0.9. Eh? Compacting factor will be around 0 0.9. So let's say if your compacting factor that you get is about 0 0.6 or 0 0.5, so this is the indication that your workability of the concrete has some problem. There is some problem in your workability. Okay, so maybe you have to add water, you have to add super plasticizer, yeah, so that it is more lubricant. Okay, so that is a compacting factor test. Yeah? All right. Okay, VB test. Yeah? VB test is uh, the only test yeah, for the workability where we use uh, vibration. Okay. So if you look at the compacting factor test and also slum test, we use manual tamping, right? Using the tamping road. So this one is used vibration. And then for the VB test, actually what we want to obtain is VB time. Eh? VB time or VB take uh, VB second. We call VB, VB second. So how this test is being performed is that, okay, you look at here, actually this is the apparatus, eh? the apparatus for the VB. Okay, so you have this. Con, eh? we, we prefer using con eh? in all workability tests. And then we pour the fresh concrete inside here. Then after that, we take out this con, we take out this con, and then we lower down this plastic disc eh? to touch our concrete. Then this one, 
here actually is the vibrator okay so once we start the vibrator the concrete when it is in uh, when we pour the concrete inside inside here so actually the concrete basically is like this eh? it will be in the cone shape okay so we use this uh, plastic this okay contact here okay and then we start the vibration we start the vibration so how many seconds that is required for the concrete from here to become flat okay so that is the time taken so that is what we call as vb second or vb time so the shorter time that you take eh, for the concrete from a cone shape to become flat shape okay which means that your concrete has better workability okay so the longer time required which means that your concrete is very hard to work with okay very poor in terms of workability so normally yeah normally for a for a normal concrete it should be ranging from three seconds to five seconds okay so if your concrete takes 10 seconds from cone shape to become flat shape so which that is an indication that the workability has some problems yeah your concrete has some problem okay right so basically those are the, the those are the tests like, yeah from concept to become a flesh shape like this yeah? like what you can see on the screen all right okay so this is the example yeah? that uh, the picture so this is the slum test so if vb time is about 10 seconds you will get a concrete which is very dry yeah the slum also is very small okay but with the set vb time is five seconds or less normally your concrete has a very good workability okay so that is that indication right so factor affecting the consistency and also workability okay so before i continue eh, anyone uh, have you heard about consistency of concrete before consistency is it about the retention hours Retention hour for, for what way? Or the fresh concrete, uh, zero hour, one hour, two hour. So the workability is about the same. Okay. So which means that the re re retention, eh, the workability of retention. But normally, eh, normally when we mix a concrete, eh, when we mix a concrete, the concrete will start to set after 45 minutes. Eh? We have for, for 45 minutes. So within this 45 minutes, we have to get our everything done. Lah. So of course, when we want to transport the concrete from the from one one, let's say from the ready mix factory to to the site, which uh, have a very long distance and we require more time, eh, so that the concrete is not set after 45 minutes. Okay. So there are some admixtures that we you are required to use. Let's set retarder, but without set retarder, without set retarder, without hydration retarder. 45 minutes is the normal time for the concrete to set. And so within 45 minutes, you have to do all your concreting works. Okay. So consistency. Okay. So actually this consistency is uh, not that famous work. So even uh, some uh, more, most of the engineers uh, who have experience in this also eh, will, 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 uh, uh, will be very blur on this concept. Eh? Okay. So consistency, we know that when the concrete, eh, when it is first made, uh, when it is in the fresh state, eh, it is in the slurry form, right? It is in a slurry form. So when the concrete is in fresh state, we have to treat the concrete as if it is a commercially uh, liquid product, commercialized liquid product. So what is mean by commercialized liquid product? Uh, commercialized liquid products actually is everything that you sell for, uh, which is in liquid form example like paint yeah the paint that we use to paint the wall okay and also ketchup okay ketchup so if we go to kfc macd okay you use ketchup right okay you use ketchup so we try to imagine that if you want to pour you want to pour out yeah, the ketchup from the ketchup bottle okay from the ketchup bottle if it is too dry okay you shake multiple times okay the ketchup won't come out from the bottle so you automatically you will think that the ketchup has already spoiled correct or not okay but on the other hand okay if your ketchup is too liquid eh, it come out too easily like plain water okay you also will think that your ketchup has already spoiled okay so no matter it is too dry or too wet eh, as long as it is commercialized liquid product eh, it must be in the optimum water content it must produce it must have its 
optimum water content. It cannot be too dry. It cannot be too uh, wet. Similarly, like paint, eh? if your paint is too dry, eh? when you want when you open the bottle and the tin, you want to uh, paint the wall. Eh? When it is too dry, you cannot. It is very hard for you eh, to do. But if when it is too wet, it will not stick on the wall. Okay, so it must have the optimum water content. So similarly, in the fresh concrete, okay, in the fresh concrete, it, the consistency of the cement fresh has to be good. Okay, it cannot be too dry and it cannot be too wet. So that is what we call as consistency of the cement. So of course, the consistency of the cement will relate to the setting times of the concrete, which is uh, the setting time of the concrete normally, like I said, it should be, initial setting should be 45 minutes to one hour and then Final set is about 10 hours, maximum 10 hours after our casting. Okay, so after our casting, 10 hours is the final set. Okay, so if the consistency of the concrete is not good, yeah, consistency of the concrete is not good, so it will affect this, which is the 45 minutes and also 10 hours, the setting timing of the concrete. Okay, so that is the consistency. And of course, workability, you have already known that. Okay, so the factor that affecting these two things, eh, which is the optimum water content of the concrete, is the water content. Of course, higher water content will increase the workability. Fineness of the cement, uh, when the workability decreases as the fineness uh, increases. Okay, chemical admixtures will increase the workability. Pozzolanic admixtures. Uh, PFA increase the workability. Aggregates depends on the shape and size and also temperature. Higher temperature will reduce the workability. Like I said multiple times, uh, the slum loss. Okay, right. So at here, uh, you can see admixtures. Actually, admixtures, there are two types. And one is the chemical admixture and another one is the pozzolanic. Okay, so what is the difference between these two? Eh? Any idea? Any idea? Anyone have any idea on what is pozzolan? Okay, chemical emissions. I believe everyone knows. Super plus designer is a chemical emission, correct or not? Because it is made from uh, formaldehyde. Okay, it, okay, and then uh, pozzolanic emission. What is pozzolanic emission? So, what is mean by pozzolanic? Anyone? Fires. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> uh, Faiz, you are you are in the civil engineering background or not? Yes, I'm civil engineering background. You are working. You are working in, uh, in what? What consultant or contractor? I'm uh, working with government. Uh, oh, government. Yeah. Which department? Yeah. Uh, uh, infrastructure transportation. Oh, transportation. I see, I see. Okay, okay. Good, good. Okay, never mind. Thank you. Oh, doctor, can I try? Okay. It is don't... actually um, <clears throat> fine ash precipitated okay. from the exhaust uh, gas. Okay. Yeah. And it's actually okay. known as uh, pulverish or fewer ash uh, that we normally call. Okay. All right. Okay. So that is the example of the pozzolanic atmospheres. Lah. Okay, correct. Oh, thank you very much. So fly ash is the example of pozzolanic admissions eh? but uh, actually pozzolanic eh? pozzolanic is a reaction where we refer to just now eh? just now when who, who asked me tan eh? tan i think it's tan eh? she asked me about the hydration process eh? why i said the hydration process is the basic of this and eh? because if you look at here okay let's say we take example eh? calcium the three calcium silicates when it is in contact with water it will create uh, CSS gel plus the calcium hydroxide, correct or not? So this whole process is what is what we call as hydration process. Okay, hydration process. So the hydration product is CSS gel and also the calcium hydroxide. So fly ash, if we put fly ash in our concrete eh, or the pulverized uh, fuel ash, eh, PFA, so this fly ash, it will, it will react with this calcium hydroxide calcium hydroxide to form more CSS gel okay so that is the benefit of using fly ash even though it is a waste material from the industry eh? PFA before this eh? everyone 
just throw it at the lens uh, landfill. Okay, but if we put the PFA inside our concrete, so this PFA, it will react with calcium hydroxide in order to create more CSS gel. Yeah? Like I said before, when your concrete has more CSS gel, it will be stronger, okay, in terms of the compression strength. So this reaction, PFA plus calcium hydroxide to create CSS gel, more CSS gel, this reaction, this whole reaction is what we call as pozzolanic reaction. For every material or the admixture that we put into concrete, which will have this reaction to create more CSL gel is what we call as pozzolan. Okay, so thought just now is correct. Eh? Fuel ash of, or fly ash eh, is pozzolan, one type of the pozzolan. And of course, we have other uh, many other types of pozzolans. Eh? Not only fly ash, we have silica fume, okay? we have a slag, we have a, a, what we call a, rice hush, uh, rice hush ash, and many other things. Eh? All of this, which has the reaction, a pozzolanic reaction, is what we call as uh, pozzolan, okay? pozzolanic emissions. But SP, SP do not enter this pozzolanic reaction. When we add SP into our, inside our concrete, it will not create CSS gel, okay? It will just only render your semen hydrophobic, eh? so that the water that cannot stick with our semen. Eh, so that your concrete, uh, your, your concrete will be more workable. Lah, okay, so chemical, uh, that is the type of chemical admissions. Okay, so far, okay. Eh? Can you understand? Eh? Okay, two types of things that we do not want in our concrete. Eh? The first one is segregation. Eh? What is mean by segregation? That is like this. Eh? This is a concrete section. Okay, so inside a concrete, eh, oh, I have already uh, mentioned this multiple times, we have coarse aggregate, which is the heaviest, and then we have a fine aggregate, which is the second heaviest, okay, and then we have cement and water, which are lighter compared to the aggregates, okay, so segregation is when we mix the concrete, supposedly they are homogeneous, eh? the mix should be uniform, but then due to the workmanship error, some of the heavier aggregates, they go to the bottom of the concrete, like this, yeah, like this. So if this is your concrete, so I can assume that your concrete have non-homogeneous properties where here you have weaker strength, but here it is stronger. Okay, here is stronger. Okay, so you have the, you have a base, which is the river sand and also cause aggregate. They are heavier material compared to your cement. Okay, so we have to handle cement we have to send handle, sorry, handle our concrete so that the aggregations won't happen. Yeah? So, okay, so the definition of segregation, it is a tendency for the separations of the large and fine particles in the in a fresh concrete mix. Okay, so it resulted in non-homogeneous mix, okay, non-homogeneous mix, and then the segregations uh, one of the causes of poor and honeycomb surface. Okay, so it will result in honeycomb and also it will result in crack. Eh? So the segregations normally occur eh, due to very dry mix. Okay, when the mix is too dry, eh, when the mix is too dry and you need a lot of compaction. Eh? When you need a lot of compaction because of the vibration that you give to the aggregate, eh, you give the force to the aggregate, so the aggregate, they will escape themselves from the mix. Okay, and then they will sunk below at the bottom. So that is how the segregations occur. Not because the dry mix itself, but because it is dry mix and you need more compaction and it will result in the segregation. So that is one thing. And the second one is very wet mix. So what has happened with this very uh, wet mix is that when you have a lot of water in your concrete, eh, especially for the lean concrete, eh, when lean concrete means that you have a lot of water like, eh, compared to the cement eh, in your concrete. So when your when when your concrete mix is too wet, okay, the coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, and also the cement, they lost the ability to pull your water together. So some of the water they escape, eh, they escape, and then they go on top of your uh, concrete mixture. Okay, so that is what happened to the very uh, wet mix. Okay, so when the water they go on top of your concrete mixture, okay, because they are lighter, they will bring together the cement. Okay, which leaves the coarser aggregate, the uh, coarser aggregate, but also heavier aggregate at the bottom. So that is also a form of segregation. Okay, coarser mix, of course. Eh? So this uh, has already been 
talk multiple times eh, in your degree, I believe, when we are mixing concrete, so supposedly the aggregates that we are using has to be in a good grading, which is uniform grade. Okay, so when your the aggregate that you are using is gap graded like this, eh? when the cost aggregate is too big, eh? when the cost aggregate is too big compared to your uh, sand, and then you have only one size of the aggregate, and this is uh, this will contribute to the segregation. So in the concrete mix, we must ensure that the aggregates that we are using has a uniform grade, which is good grading. Okay, so during testing and compaction, concrete mix contain too many. Uh, um, cost aggregate so we have already discussed this and then cement paste segregate from concrete mix where the mix is too wet eh? the water go on top of the concrete okay and then uh okay vibration okay so this is the vibrations of the concrete uh, we have to complete the complex uh, compaction before the initial set so initial set is 45 minutes to 60 minutes okay and then final set is uh Final set is about 10 hours. Eh? Yeah, about 10 hours. So what actually is the difference between the initial set and also the final set? Anyone? Maybe uh, Edna? Edna, you here? No, no response from Edna. Are you still? Are you still with me? Is it okay? So, one. Eh? Uh, what about Nuru Shuhada? Shuh Nuru Shuhada, you here? Yes, Dato. Yeah. Okay, what do you know about initial set and final set? How do we differentiate these two? Mm. <laughs> okay, uh, you just answer me, what is setting? Setting of concrete? Yeah, yeah. Concrete setting? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's mean the concrete... Uh, uh how do you call it uh, <laughs> after a certain amount of time uh the concrete is uh hardened okay 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 right okay correct okay thank you thank you okay, Guru. okay. right correct eh? so the setting is uh, actually eh? so the scientific definition of setting of a concrete is when a thing which is in liquid form they change to solid form so that is what we call a setting. So in concrete, it is from fresh concrete to become hardened concrete. Okay. So setting uh, will take times. Okay. We, uh, we call it a initial set and also final set. And how do we differentiate the setting time of the concrete? Is that initial set of the concrete is the uh, first peak rise in terms of the temperature of the concrete. We know when we are casting concrete, eh, when we cast the concrete, the concrete normally will be very hot, right? So that is because the heat of the hydration is released from the concrete. So during the first release of the, of the temperature, that is what we call as initial set. And then the peak temperature will achieve the hottest time. Eh? The hottest time or peak temperature will be achieved during the final set, which is about 10 hours. Eh? So that is the setting time of the concrete. Eh? Okay, so in the industry, normally we do the, what we call the compaction through ramming, tamping, and also to uh, nowadays we are using mechanical uh, vibrators or what we call as poker eh? poker vibrator okay poker vibrator right okay so this is the uh, this is the example eh? example of segregation so segregation is not only eh, limited to this one eh? as you can see in the number two where you do not have aggregates here eh? you do not have aggregates as upper part it also can be referred to like this, eh? the figure two, where you only have uh, uh, what we call aggregates as, uh, on this part, okay? Whereas at this part, there is no aggregates. There is only cement uh, paste, okay? And also fine aggregates, okay? So the effects of the segregations, eh, it will result in the strength not uniform. 
So normally, eh, when we want to check, sorry, Hanif. Uh, doctor, yep. is there any relationship between the setting, the concrete setting and the uh, vibration just now? Uh, is there any any specific relationship between the uh, setting time and the concrete setting? Uh, it's mean that in terms of the temperature and then the vibration, the process of vibration. Okay, so the vibration, yeah, the vibration actually uh, has actually the hydration, uh, sorry, the, the, the temperature, yeah, the temperature is related with the hydration. Yeah? So no matter we do the compaction or not, yeah, the hydration is still happen. Okay, the hydration is happen. But when we do compaction, okay, when we do compaction, the water, yeah, the water will be more uniform. Okay, it will result in the more uniform uh, properties of the concrete. Okay, more uniform concrete. It will be not non homogeneous. Yeah. So basically, there is uh, there is no direct. Yeah? Which means that if you want to. Uh, reach certain setting time of the concrete, we do no more compaction. No, there's no such thing. Okay, Anil? Okay, Dr. Okay, right. Okay, so effect of the segregation, it resulted in the non-uniform strength, like I said, and non-homogeneous properties of the concrete, and also lack of durability, where there is a lot of porosity eh, happens in your concrete like this. Eh? So there are lots of uh, voids happens, okay, voids, and then sometimes cracks will also happen due to the segregations. And the external agent, yeah, acid, sulfate, and everything, yeah, that easily can go inside the concrete to attack your concrete. Okay, and then methods to minimize the segregation. How we prevent or minimize the segregation? First one is that your concrete must have a good workability. So when your concrete has good workability, lesser work that need to be uh, done for the compaction. Okay, so when your compaction is only very little, right? So that is a uh, only a very uh, low tendency that your concrete or your heavier aggregates will segregate it. Okay, so that is the key point, eh? good workability. Uh, concrete should not be over compacted, okay, and then correct placing of the concrete, okay, correct placing actually there are lots of, uh, there are, there are a, a large topics, eh? large, large scope over here, so I would, I would not uh, uh, expand too detail on these things. Eh? The, the, you only have to know that when we talk about correct uh, placing of the concrete is that, let's say if we want to cast this large panel of the slab, okay, so when we want to pour the concrete inside this, eh, so some of the people, they will pour only in one single location, okay, and then they will do the, the vibration eh, at the peak here so that the concrete will go, will flow to other direction. So that is one uh, example of incorrect placing. Yeah? Supposingly, the concrete, yeah, if we want to place at this direction, yeah, the concrete has to be poor as close as this po position, yeah, at uh, this location. So let's say if you want to cast at this location, your palm or your tongue drum yeah, for the concrete yeah, has to be located here and then at here, yeah, but not uh, distribute to other places by using the vibration okay so that is the in incorrect placing la. okay and then nearby construction for example like piling eh, should be avoided because the vibration eh, due to the piling works eh, can also affect eh, uh, resulted in the segregations of our concrete okay all right so that is segregation okay so another about the same thing which is uh, bleeding okay bleeding so let's say if you have a concrete okay concrete mix okay but on top of this layer, it is water or plus some uh, cement paste, eh? plus, plus some cement paste, okay? So the water go on top of the concrete eh? like this, eh? like, like this. Eh? You can see this is actually what we call as bleeding. Eh? This is what we call as bleeding. It is the process of separation. So just now is the process of separation from the uh, coarser aggregates eh, with the finer particles. So bleeding is the process of separations of water from the fresh concrete. So there, there is some difference. Eh? And then this happens when the concrete mix does not possess proper consistency. Like I said, uh, the, the water content in the concrete is not optimum. That makes it unable to hold the mixing water. And then it results in the movement of the water and the finer particles to the top. 
Okay, so similar like segregation, it will re, it also will resulted in the non-homogeneous mix. Okay, and this can also be cause of the over vibration, uh, over troubling, eh? and also lean mixes. Okay, lean mixes. So concrete, eh? when we talk, when we say lean concrete, eh? lean concrete normally means water is uh, is too much. Eh? There are too, too high content of the water inside the concrete. Eh? So that is what we call as bleeding. So the effects of the bleeding uh, can be catastrophic, okay? Because uh, if, if you look at here, eh, this whole thing, eh, so this is the concrete, okay? And then inside the concrete here, we have the aggregates and then we have steel, okay? So this is our steel river. Eh? So the steel river and then you have rib, okay? So this is steel river, eh? okay? And then if bleedings of the concrete happens, it is not only happen at the top here, okay? But then the bleeding will also can happen at here. Okay, so if we look at the cross section, it is about like this. It is about like this. Where this part is the bleeding, eh? bleeding water. When this happened, eh? when this happened, so normally even a very uh, small movement of the concrete, small movement of the reinforcement bar, it will result in the crack propagated starting from this part. Okay. So this is the bleeding, yeah? and of course, when you have bleeding, okay. So this part normally is weaker compared to the concrete. And how do minim how do we minimize the bleeding? We reduce the water content, okay. Concrete cannot be too lean, yeah? the mix cannot be too lean, and then increase the final particles in the mix. So when we increase final particle, like I said, more water are required in order to wet the parameters of the aggregate. And then we can also use A entrainment admixtures or SP. Okay? Rather than we add more water inside our mix, we can reduce the water amount, but we add a super plasticizer. And also sometimes we can use this A entraining admixtures. Okay? This A entraining admixtures uh, actually is not that common in our tropical uh, countries lah, okay? because A entraining agent actually is an admixture in order to prevent the freezing and thawing effects of the concrete okay which normally happens in the four season country okay uh, this air entrainment agent is uh, the function is that when we put air entrainment uh, agent inside our concrete mix it will create a bubble in our concrete and when it create a bubble in our concrete yeah, so it will also render our cement uh, hydrophobic so that is the uh, site it, uh, what we call the bonus using air and training agent. Eh? It will increase the workability. Okay, and then the last one is proper compaction. Okay, factors that affect uh, the concrete strength and durability, water cement ratio, uh, good mix design, and also cement content. Where when we have the higher cement content, it will increase the compressive strength by production of more cells SGL. Eh? So it increase uh, the strength uh, and the durability uh, altogether. Okay. So this is already the summarization eh, of what we have already uh, discussed earlier. Okay, so this probably is our last slide. Eh? And then types of aggregate, uh, we, have, uh, we have to use, the, we have to choose the suitable size, grading, strength of aggregate, uh, and so on and so forth. And then use chemical admixtures, eh? A and training admixtures will, will reduce the compressive strength a little bit, but then it will increase the workability. Pozzolanic admixtures, it increases the CSS gel because of the pozzolanic reaction and will make the concrete denser. Proper compaction is good compaction, reducing the amount of the voids and then curing. Eh, curing we haven't talked before. Curing is when we cast our concrete. Eh? After we have cast our concrete, we have to cure eh, our concrete. So the curing actually is to facilitate the hydration process. Just now we have talked about hydration process multiple times. Eh? So curing actually is the process, let's say if we have a concrete uh, beam like this, eh? concrete beam or concrete beam specimens. Lah, eh? So after we have cast it, eh? cast the concrete, so we have to use the, what we call wet clothes, eh? wet clothes to close the specimen. Okay, the reason that we do this is because we don't want the water inside this concrete to evaporate. Okay, so once the concrete go out from the from 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 our concrete, eh, so the water left in our concrete might not be able to complete the full hydration process. 
Okay, so we don't want the water to evaporate to escape from our concrete. So that's why we have to use the wet cloth. Okay, we ensure that if there is a wet or okay, high humidity, so that the water inside here cannot escape. Okay, so that is curing. Yeah? So curing can improve the water strength by ensuring yeah, the completion of the hydration process. Okay, so I think that will be all for today. Okay, uh, coincidentally, now it's already 10 p.m. So, see you.